So I haven't talked to you in like two weeks and it's still take two and call me in the morning? It take two what? Yeah, all right. <laughs> Whatever I want, okay. So yeah, then then it's then it's like if it hurts when you do that, don't do that. Yeah, thanks, Doc. See you. Okay. Bye. Hey, uh, back in the saddle, uh, episode three, season twenty-one, Niagara Four One One Live with Lee Sterry. That's me. Hear this weird voice? We'll talk about that. Anyway, welcome to the show. It's so fabulous to be back on this beautiful sunny day. Fiddler's Poor House. The window is wide open for you, so you can come on down and enjoy your lunch. Uh, take part in the show live if you want to do that. Uh, we are, of course, as always, fueled by Gales Gas Bars Limited. We are supported by Performance Heating and Air, as well as Verge Insurance. Always happy to have those folks on board with us. Um, we're going to kind of catch up on some things we missed while uh, while I was off on my Greek island. Uh, thanks to Bree, by the way, for filling in. Um, also, we have the mom of a fellow that was uh, sub, uh, uh, the victim of a hit and run in St. Catharines the other night. Just a, a strange story, and she's gonna be on the show. Uh, also, we shall have the uh, proprietor uh, of Le Beau Chapeau, uh, who, uh, well, you know, so. <laughs> That's coming up. Uh, it's so wonderful to be back. And of course, powered by WeStream as always. We'll chat with Kevin and get brought up to date in just about 30 seconds. Stick around, thank you. Okay, uh, we are live, as they say. Uh, welcome, welcome back uh, to the show for this week. And uh, just trying to make sure everything's uh, stuck in the right place. An absolutely spectacular day. We've got some humidity uh, coming back in, so it actually feels like summer. We went through the May long while I was away. And that, of course, is our unofficial uh, beginning of summer. And that's why I brought out the straw uh, for today because, uh, well, as far as our minds are concerned, it's summer. Now, while I was away, um, somehow either traveling away, traveling back, well, I, was, I don't know, I uh, came in contact with, with something or somebody that uh, resulted in this uh, sort of weird um, laryngitis-like thing I got going on. It is not COVID for sure, have done all the testing and all that, or I would not be here. I would be, I would be doing my due diligence as isolating and all that. Uh, but uh, anyway, here we are. So the, the, the voice, I, I think it's gonna last uh, through to 1.30, but uh, we're sounding a little sexier than we usually do. <laughs> anyway, Niagara 411 Live for this May the 26th, season three, episode 21. Kevin Jack, uh, I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but I, I've missed you. Yeah, and uh, and me too, Lee. And it's happy, I'm very happy to have you back, in uh, in whatever condition you can kind of stumble into Fiddler's Poorhouse here. And of course, <laughs> uh, the show is wide open via Zoom, and it's also wide open at Fiddler's here. It's a gorgeous day. We got some great seats. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we, we will have some open spots, as I mentioned, coming in. We do. Have, there's your great seats right there. They are uh, ready, willing, and able to uh, keep you entertained through your lunch hour or lunch three hour however long you want to spend here on this uh, beautiful thursday afternoon again thanks to uh, brie watson for uh, for filling in uh, she sort of got her feet wet on uh, on this show the last couple of weeks and uh, sometimes it's not an easy uh, it's not an easy gig it's uh, it's kind of uh, an interesting thing to get used to and uh, i think she did a fabulous job and uh, I want to thank Bree uh, of Improv Niagara for hosting the show uh, the last couple of weeks. Appreciate it. Um, Kevin, I want to start with something that has been the biggest story around Niagara for, for some months. Well, since New Year's Eve, since the beginning of the year. Uh, 
Katrina Blagden, Katrina, her fur, full first name, you know, went missing on uh, New Year's Eve 2021, New Year's Eve of this past year. Um, while I was away, the body that they had found in the Port de Luzi area in the water was positively identified as, uh, as Trina. And I just, I was, I was thousands of kilometers away and I was just, I had, as I'm sure most of you have had, and her family as well, mixed emotions about the confirmation of the identity of that, uh, of that body pulled from the water as Trina. Um, first of all, it was, f thank God we have some road open to closure. And that's not a good word, but it's the only one we have for the family. And, uh, and then of course the mystery part of it. it and Kevin, I, I am a, to I, I'm a supporter of law enforcement and law investigation. And, and I guess I'm one of those uh, justice oriented people. If I were running for politics, I'd say law and order. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not an anarchist or a chaotic kind of supporter at all. Uh, however, I'm not happy with how this announcement was made. And with all due respect to the family, when it was confirmed that that body was Trina, um, they said there's no foul play suspected and that was they were closing the investigation kevin i don't think that's good enough the entire community got involved in this uh, the family never never failed their pledge to their sister and daughter to follow up and keep following up until until some answers were found and Trina was found one way or the other. They never let up on their pledge to do that. The community never let up on their pledge to support them. And I believe that we all deserve an answer. The officials, the law enforcement people, the forensic people, um, the, they know, or at least they have they have theories, and, and I believe they're doing a disservice to this community by not telling us after everything we went through. I know that's a strong statement, and I apologize if it kind of uh, pokes the bear a little bit when it comes to the family, but we are all vested in, in the outcome of, of this case, not because we're, we're curiosity seekers or, uh, or you know, wanna, wanna scandalize it or, or whatever. It's because I, I think we cared about this. And we care about why and we care about what. And somebody knows and they're not telling us. And I'm sorry about it, but that's how I felt. So anyway. Or, um, or is it that at all? Is the only person that knows Katrina? You know what I mean? I, I, but then say that. No comment is a comment. I mean, they Tell did us. say that no foul play is suspected, and I guess I have to accept that. Okay. I, I don't know that anybody... Sorry. I, I, it's not good enough for me. Yeah, I, I hear you. I, I don't have much more to add, Lee. I mean, when that body was found in Port Dalhousie, I think we all feared the worst. And then it took four or five days to confirm that, in fact, it was. Yes, and by then I, I was in another part of the country. So I, and uh, to get, um, just so you know, I, I have been not really active but passive, but I'm part of a group that the family started when the search efforts were front and center. And Kelly, Katrina's sister, who we yeah, had on you this put program the picture a couple up of there times. A um, she had, there was a statement from the family, right? Trina's army, we're finally able to give our beautiful girl the dignity and rest she has been denied. We're extending an invitation to those of you that have supported us from both near and far to pay your respects. The visitation and viewing will be held on June the 10th, 2022, times to be released later at George Dart Funeral Home, St. Catharines. A funeral service will be held on the 11th of June. And again, uh, I hold no, uh, no, no shade on, on the family at all. I, I, just, I just feel that something that we embraced for so long um, 
deserves further clarity. Yeah, and Lee, that's something that uh, that I'm going to have to reach out to Kelly about and see whether or not... I, yeah. I know she's got family that is far-reaching, especially military family. Yeah, and a lot it seems, in the Ottawa area. It seems area. to me that a, um, a professional and dignified live stream of her funeral is something that the family may welcome. So I'll be reaching out to uh, Kelly between now and June 11th. Again, visitation June 10th. Yeah. Um, I guess a private funeral on June 11th. If the family would like WeStream to be involved, absolutely, I'll volunteer. What a wonderful, to do what, that. what a wonderful offer, uh, Kevin. Because I think there would be a lot of people very, very uh, interested in that for and, and, all the for all the right reasons. Yeah, exactly. I don't, I, I don't mean it's to not take, exploitation. Exactly. I mean, she does have military family, her personal family out in the Maritimes, military family in Petawawa, yeah. and you know, uh, if you've if you've been stationed at one base, you know that pretty pretty soon. You know people all the way from the West Coast, all the way up to uh, St. John's, Newfoundland. Absolutely. I don't Absolutely. know, Katrina, no different, but boy, oh boy. <sighs> anyway, um, I, I feel, I don't know, good isn't the right word, but that's all I'm going to say. I, I feel maybe relieved is a better word um, for the family that at least now they can begin to heal, uh, now that there is something to heal. And... Um, that's the best. Uh, that's the best I can say about it. Um, again, Deacon Bentley was a young man, 19 years of age, that was the victim of a hit and run on Welland Avenue, not far from Geneva Street, in St. Catharines, last Friday night. Um, he suffered enough injury that he was in intensive care for three days, and um, and of course, as I said, hit and run. So we don't know where the driver is, and that's the subject of of our conversation today. Uh, his mother, Maureen Butcher, is going to be joining us uh, at some point in time in, in the very near future on the program today, I mean. Um, it's scheduled for 1220. However, they're undergoing some evaluations and some further uh, medical scrutiny at the moment. So that, that time frame is fluid. Uh, but uh, Maureen Deacon Bentley's mom is going to be on with us. Uh, I'm writing this on behalf of the pedestrian hit Friday, May 20th on Welland Avenue. We're currently asking for help to locate any witnesses who have seen or have any information on the car that took off after hitting my son and leaving him lying there in the road. We spent the last three days in Hamilton Hospital ICU. The, the vehicles believed to be, um, and I say believed to because it's, it's not a 100% certainty, believed to be a burgundy in color Toyota, what is believed to be a Yaris. Um, they th as I say, they think that is the vehicle in, in question because it was seen speeding down Waters Street. Was it 100% sure that that was in connection to the hit and run? No, um, but, um, but it's a place to start. So we'll keep you posted as we go through this. And uh, when she can, when she is able, um, Deacon's mom is going to be uh, clicking into the program, which you can do, by the way. As Kevin mentioned, it's open to anyone. Uh, we don't have the program completely uh, blocked up with planned guests. So as you can see on the bottom of your screen right down there, click the Zoom link in the post that you're viewing right now. It'll put you into our uh, waiting room, if you will, our Zoom room green room. Kevin will make sure that you're all squared away audio-wise and video-wise, and then we'll We'll have a chat on, on anything you desire. It doesn't have to be the topic of the day. There is a car uh, like the one that we're thinking might be involved. That is not the car, but it is, it is a similar make and model and color. Toyota Yaris, red in color. Okay, Could have slight differences because of whatever year it is, but, um, but there you go. Um, Kevin, some other things uh, while we were away. Something that okay. Let's let's talk about the big local one first. I was going to do one thing, but let's do the the storm that happened. I was not here. I was following it, and uh, amazing what happened in some communities north of Toronto, like Uxbridge, uh, Ottawa area, and then on into. Quebec, um, as I understand it, Kev, here in, here in Niagara, we didn't, uh, it wasn't, wasn't much more than what you might call a typical kind of storm. 
right? And, and really, that depends on what part of Niagara. I think if you were like um, Fort Erie, North Shore, Lake Erie, you probably saw nothing. Yeah. Even here, uh, we stream. We were streaming a wedding at Club Roma on Saturday. Mm. We only got a few drops. Meanwhile, Lakeshore Road in St. Catharines, torrential downpour. But we didn't okay. get any of the winds that did most of the damage into... Okay. I think the most that I've seen, and I'm just gauging on social media, haven't watched any uh, traditional media reports or anything like that, but it seems the Ottawa area really got decimated. Oh. I mean, there's horrible. people there still without power. Thousands of people still without power. My cousin uh, and his wife uh, and family live in Navin, which is uh, just east uh, of Ottawa. They had two or three massive trees come down around their property. Thank goodness nobody was hurt. There was no... Uh, serious uh, structural damage or car damage or anything. It just they happened to fall in just the right uh, right directions. But other people were not so lucky. We saw reports, of course, of people that had vehicles destroyed, houses uh, almost cut in half by massive trees. So um, I hope you and uh, your family, wherever they wherever they may live in southern Ontario, were not uh, were not too badly affected by all of this just one of the things that I just go holy cow uh, this is going on I I wonder how things in in Niagara are doing and everything I could see said it looked like it was it came from Windsor and just sort of sailed across the north part of the lake and then and then up and uh, and kept going um, I wanted to mention the the armed uh, robbery and shots fired and people injured at, at the jewelry store in Frontenac Mall. And you mean uh, Fairview? Or Frontenac Going back Mall. to your Kingston Frontenac days. Frontenac is Kingston days. What am I saying? How, see, this is what the cold does to your head. Uh, yeah, Fairview Mall. And the minute I heard this, I thought of the people that are there because I'm one of their customers. I have, I have shopped there. They have done repairs for me. Uh, Carrot Jewelers is the name of the business. I don't think that too many stories mention the name of the business, uh, but I wanted to because I think they're a fabulous, a fabulous uh, family, and uh, they do great work. I, I remember one time, Kevin, and then I, I kept going back. I had a, I had a medallion that was very, uh, very important to me that was so old that it had, uh, it had been damaged. And I, I wanted to, I wanted to re, uh, rejuvenate this piece of jewelry. So I went in there and, uh, and they're craftsmen. They're not just people that sell jewelry. So I went in and I said, uh, do you think you can do something with this? He looked at, no, 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 it's not, uh, it's not this I can. Before I walked out of the store, the gentleman called me back. Let me look at this. And he looked at it and he said, give me two days. Two days later, he had come up with a solution, homemade solution, just because he was so good at his craft. And that uh, very important piece of jewelry to me was put back into circulation. I was able to, I was able to wear it. Had great respect uh, for, for the craftsmanship and professionalism of those people after that. So uh, it just sort of, uh, and I became a lifelong customer and it just hurt, it really, really bothered me, the trauma that they must have gone through uh, when, when that happened. And, and of course the, mo the, uh, the perpetrators were seen to escape on motorcycles. And Kevin, I may have been living under a rock, but I have not heard any further news. No, uh, I, I, haven't heard, I haven't heard an update about this at all, which is, I'll say, bizarre in that it was broad daylight. I think this is 11.30 a.m. In a store, in a mall, shooting a gun. And they just hopped on a crotch rocket and sped away on the QEW and got away with it after, the, after shots were fired? Like, they, they hit people. Yes, people were shot. Yeah, and yeah. then you just you speed away on your motorbike and that's it, poof, into thin air. I, I honestly didn't think you could do that. I thought it had to be more planned out than that. Yeah, I mean, you can see here. Even you know, these guys are trying to get away, and somebody's trying to grab him. Trying to grab him, or her, or whatever. I don't know if I'm grabbing a guy that's already fired shots. That doesn't look like a big person. Could it have been a? I Still, mean, that doesn't look like a big person. One of these two guys, if not both, has a gun. Yeah, but are they both guys? I don't know. 
Is it Bonnie and Clyde? I, I don't know. Now, Carrot did release uh, this statement about three or four days following the incident. Yeah, the store is now reopened. We apologize for the inconvenience. No <laughs> apologies necessary, yeah, my how friend. How Canadian is that? How, yeah, how could you apologize for this? We cannot describe how grateful and blessed we feel with all of the support and gestures of kindness that we received as the result of an unfortunate incident. Uh, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you and God bless. Uh, we now would like to participate, uh, particularly thank uh, the Niagara Region Police Service and the Niagara Emergency Medical Services. They did an outstanding job and we will always be grateful to them. Carrot Jewelers, yeah. Uh, and I'm glad you're back open. I'm glad this did not completely defeat you because that indeed would be a, a, a tragedy on top of tragedy. So. Welcome. Now, Welcome Lee, while back. you were done, that was a crazy day. That happened at about 11.30 in the morning. And yeah, then, a, and then other stuff. an hour later, you had that, uh, that tanker truck that spilled sulfuric acid or whatever it was all over the 406 right by the Penn Center yeah. and shut that down for a couple of days, which, of course, yeah. made all the other roads just absolutely jammed during the morning and afternoon commutes. So that was a weird one in St. Catharines. We got a brazen daylight armed robbery with shots fired. <laughs> Out of the Fairview Mall, they take away on a motorbike speeding down the QEW, and then just, you know, a couple kilometers down the road, we got sulfuric acid all over the road and emergency repaving and everything else that comes along with yeah, that. Yeah, sulfuric it acid nuts. is not, it, it, um, it's not fun stuff at all. No. I remember, I mean, I, I sucked at chemistry in school. I mean, I, I was horrible. Um, um, I thought the periodic table was something grammatical. I had no idea. Um, but... Um, but I did know that sulfuric acid is not good. That much I took away from my high school chemistry. I just took those away from movies, right? If you wanted to, <laughs> it seems that, that that's that's what you put in the bucket yeah. when you wanted to dissolve the body, yeah, or, or the weapon, right? You yeah, dump it in sulfuric acid. Other things while we were away, um, the regional communities of Lincoln and uh, Grimsby were given an award. Now, frankly, I don't know. I didn't delve into it in that great a detail because, frankly, I thought the story was boring as hell. Uh, but, but nevertheless, there is a, there, there is a positive line to this. Uh, Lincoln and Grimsby, two regional communities out of the 12, received an award. Why did they get a reward? Well, they, they won a national award for deciding to move forward with the concept of sharing their fire and emergency services. They ran this uh, shared pilot project and uh, received an award for it. Now, Kevin, on the surface, this seems like a nothing. But I don't think it's a nothing because since regional government was formed back in the 60s, uh, regional councillors uh, have debated over and over and over again the fact of sharing services around our municipalities. Those debates still go on today at budgeting time. Why can't we share policing? Why can't we share fire? Why can't we share emergency services? Why can't we share everything that is involved waste management now we've gone a little further with that there was an announcement recently that finally they've decided to move forward with uh with, with some form of regional transit we've we've gone there uh but but nothing has really fleshed itself out until now and these two communities decided hey we're not going to wait for the region we're going to do it ourselves and this proves that it can be done so therein i think lies the story so everybody else in the regional municipalities, get off your duffs, figure this stuff out. And if Lincoln and Grimsby can do it, why can't you? Why can't we? And at the end of the day, it's going to save us all time and effort. And, and, and that concept of regionalization of services can really be a reality. But right now we got all this turf protecting going on. Yeah, there's Wait. a little bit of collaboration between the municipalities. <sighs> there's some. But at the end of the day, they operate somewhat in silos. And as a result, we have a lot of duplication of equipment, yeah. in my understanding. Like, and there's always, there's, always that, there's always that chance 
uh, of yes, you you may be duplicating staff. So, but again, everyone at the end of the process, the concept is to try to deliver these services to the residents and citizens of Niagara at the least possible cost, and at the highest possible efficiency. That's that's the goal. It can be done. We have the technology to rebuild him. Anyway, uh, so, so, so kudos to Lincoln and Grimsby, which on the surface created kind of a dull story. But at the bottom line, uh, it's an important story. It's an important message uh, to send to all of our regional and municipal uh, politicians. Um, Kevin, were you running around Welland today? Uh, no, why do, you, uh, why do you ask, Lee? Well, uh, a, a headline hit our Niagara 4... Oh, by the way, Nick, at Niagara 411, I missed you over the last couple of weeks. Uh, glad to be back on the, uh, on the trail here with you and your, your contributors at Niagara 411. It was reported uh, on, on Nick's site today uh, that there was uh, a male uh, sans clothing uh, running around Wetland. Oh, oh, yeah, I tried to get there in time. It was, so it wasn't you? No, it wasn't me. I but know I your proclivity I, for nature, but... I tried to catch a glimpse, but... Okay. First Avenue and Rolling Acres Drive in Welland reports of a nude male running around in uh, traffic. Police on scene with EMS trying to assist the male. How are they trying to assist him? Clearing a path? Everybody out of the way. We want this guy to have a, clear, a free run here. Like, how are they supposed to assist him? Maybe it's one of these uh, new radical political parties. You know, it's election time. Maybe they're canvassing. Yes. Okay. Waving the flag for freedom. <laughs> Waving something. Yeah. Anybody catch a glimpse? I mean, I'm surprised Dick didn't turn off the comments for this, and we only got one comment. Oh, have the mail in custody. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So this was, uh, this was yesterday afternoon, I guess. When they say, when they say assist the male, I, I say this tongue-in-cheek, of course, because I'm assuming that they believe that he is disturbed in some way and they're trying to, you know, help him, help him out. But when it says somebody's running around naked and the cops are trying to help him, I'm thinking, is it a parade? So. Hey. Sorry, sarcasm 101, I apologize. I'm just trying to pull up something here, Lee, mm -hmm. uh, that we didn't talk about. But you did want to touch on the sale of the Niagara Ice Dog. So I'll let you touch on that for a second and want to come back with the success that the, uh, the Junior B Falcons are having because they're set up for a Sutherland Cup run. Well, that's good. That, that is definitely your bailiwick. You, you be the hockey guy for sure. Other than the fact that one of the uh, – I'm just trying to revisit the stories that we spent a fair bit of time on. Uh, before the uh, before the least dairy hiatus <laughs> took place, and that was the news. Also, while I was all these all these big announcements came while I was away, I think they wait for me to go. Um, the fact that the Niagara Ice Dogs uh, have indeed been sold and sold to this is quite an interesting name. Hopefully, I get it get it right. The Devil R. Uh, Darren de Debelar, I believe. Could be. I think it's de Debelar, but de Debelar. I don't think either of us know for sure. No, and Darren probably doesn't care. He owns the team. We can call him whatever he wants. But anyway, uh, Darren de Debelar um, is, and and I confess to not having deep knowledge of Darren's past or his pedigree. I don't know Darren other than he owns a Tier 2 and maybe a Junior B franchise in Brantford. So he is not strange to the sport. No, and he's, you know, somewhat local, you know, setting his roots right. in Brantford. Right. Uh, I also saw rumors, Lee, that uh, because of the Brantford connection that there might be some sort of a minority stake for Wayne Gretzky. I, I caught wind of that this morning, and it was literally just sort of a whiff going by that I, uh, with, with, with no real firm um, corroboration of, of that. So we won't go out on too uh, tenuous a limb on, on that scale, but I had, I had heard that he may be looking to, uh, not, uh, not to reinvest, but increase his investment, if you will, in Niagara, because of course there's the winery and you know that kind of thing. So. Anyway. But uh, then on the Junior B side, Lee, and yeah, I, I you, you this fill us in on this, Kev. Uh, friends of my family, or I guess, sorry, my friends, 
Um, their son, Chris Reed, is mm-hmm. his first year for the Junior B Falcons, so I've been following them a little more closely. Congratulations to Chris because he won uh, Rookie of the Year honors with the team this year. Awesome. Congratulations. And uh, they had a big win last night in Cambridge. Yeah. And that wrapped up the round robin. And the three champions, so you had the St. Catharines, Junior B Falcons, you had the Chatham Maroons, and you also had Cambridge. I think they're the Winter Hawks. Right. And they played around Robin to eliminate one of them. Cambridge got eliminated. So it's St. Catharines versus Chatham for the Sutherland Cup. It's a best of three. And it begins, as you see right there, begins tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Uh, J- at G- Jack Gate Cliff Arena. Yeah. I- I'm not exactly sure whether or not St. Catharines has home ice advantage or something like that. Like, it's a best of three. First game here. Second game is probably in Chatham. Where would they play a third game? I'm not sure. And I think the teams went one and one, each, each team winning one game in the round robin. Let me, let me get your opinion uh, on that in relation to not just this particular series, but other series as well. Best out of three. Now, that, that's about as short a playoff series as you could possibly have. Um, and I know they do best three out of five in a lot of cases because you can get equal time on your home, uh, on your home field or ice or whatever it is, I, I, I kind of get that. But it seems to me that a lot of these playoffs, be they professional, minor leagues, whatever, um, are best out of sevens or or what, just just to drag in a bit more cash. Yeah, and I, it beats the teams up like crazy. Uh, by the end of them, the teams are like the guys and and ladies are just beaten up like crazy uh, and and exhausted and they need just about four months to recuperate before they go to camp for the next season yeah, so uh, that's, and that's I want to like best out of sevens Kevin is it really necessary well not uh, considering that both of these teams have already been through their own league playoffs which is best of yeah. seven best of seven best of seven then they get into a round robin where they play six more games you yeah. like, do we need seven more probably but I mean three. even even NHL Major League Baseball it's like holy cow yeah. At least, at least with at least with NFL football, it's one and you're out. You got a playoff game, you win, you're out. Can you imagine if they took the NFL to three out of five? What that would be like? <laughs> <laughs> You'd have nobody on the field yeah. at the end of the day. Uh, so anyway, yeah, Sutherland Cup kicks off tomorrow night. Go Falcons, go! Cheering hard for uh, Chris Reed and the rest of the boys down there. Uh, let's bring the Sutherland Cup home. And if you think of it, Lee. I mean, there's at least one game left at Jack Gay Cliff Arena, yeah. and it's tomorrow night. So if you've been holding on and holding on, said, i got to get down to the Jack, get down there tomorrow night and support yeah. the Falcons as they look for a Sutherland Cup. Uh, Lee, I'll let you uh, set up this, this next story, but we've got uh, Maureen and Deacon. Oh, and, and Deacon? Yeah, I think they're both there. Wonderful. Uh, okay, so here's the, here's the deal, and we talked about this earlier. Um, Mother of the young man that was struck by a vehicle on Welland Avenue in St. Catharines put out a statement that we read to you early, earlier. The young man is Deacon Bentley. He's 19 years old, uh, and it, it happened on Welland Avenue, uh, close to Geneva Street. Um, they believe that we're looking for a Burgundy Toyota Yaris. I'm not 100% sure that that's the vehicle uh, in question, but right now that's a starting point. Um, spent three days in intensive care in Hamilton, and we have Maureen Butcher as well as Deacon Bentley uh, on the line. Hi, guys. Uh, thanks for being here. How you doing? I'm doing all right. It could be better, I guess. Yeah. How about De- yourself? Well, hey, I'm compared to you. I'm just I'm aces. So listen, That's Deacon. Uh, what what injuries did you sustain by this? Uh. Head injury, uh, fracture, broken nose, um, some scrapes on the elbows, like some severe road rash, um, like kind of like a gaseous cut road rash on my side. Yeah. Um, internal bruising. And uh, internal bruising? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Maureen, how did you find out that this had happened? Because the the driver of this vehicle left Deacon Lyon in the street. How did you find out about it? I was actually at an appointment. His girlfriend called, and uh, I was trying to answer back to the messages. She told me what just happened, so I was like rushing back to get back here to see. 
and get to the hospital and yeah mom trying to be as calm as possible yeah <laughs> which, which is pretty darn hard to do yeah. uh you must have been just out of your mind uh especially when we got to the hospital and i finally got to see him i kind of walked in and walked right back out because he was connected with all the breathing tubes and his ivs and the pain meds and they had him in a uh, induced coma for three days okay now um Deacon, I don't want to put too much stress on you. You okay, man? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, you went. You went through some sort of evaluation or something this morning, right? What? 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 What occurred today? Uh, nothing really. Um, everything's good. So they did an evaluation of you today, and you're coming along. He's he's coming along. They got him on some pain meds so that's the I was like okay so you're a little you're a little bit buzzed right now uh, <laughs> what what I ought to get I get it um what were you doing uh that night when you got hit or do you remember honestly I don't really remember quite frankly I lost a lot of memory what was the last thing you do remember about that night <laughs> just waking up in the hospital that's it just waking up yeah, yeah. Maureen, and he woke up in the hospital. He thought we put him in there. Maureen, what t what time of day did this happen again? It was uh, just about nine o'clock, nine p.m. Friday nine night. Yeah, and and so he was out for the for the evening. Did did you know where he had intended to go or or where he'd intended to be? Well, he was out with friends. They were out just hanging out and whatnot. So far as I know, he came back to the house. He ended up walking out the door of his house, and then next thing you know, he was on the ground. Being okay. left by whoever hit him. All right, so walk us through what happened since the authorities were informed. Uh, uh, Deacon's taken to the hospital, and the medical team is doing their job. What what was law enforcement doing at this time? What did they say to you? What did they ask you? What's going on? Bring us up to date on that. I'm not too sure what the cops did. The cops are... Um the officer that's investigating is more useful than his paramedics were. Uh, it took me quite a few to figure out which hospital they sent him to. The um, paramedics refused to inform me and let me know. Why? So it's been a rough what? few days. Why? <laughs> did you they ask them why they, did they ask, did they, did you ask them why they wouldn't tell you where he was? Oh, we got to drop out. We'll get it back. Yeah, I think we're just having a connection issue. Oh, here we go. They're back. Okay. Sorry, Maureen. We had a bit of a connection glitch. I'll ask you again. Why do you believe that the EMS people didn't tell you where he was taken? Uh, we did it again. Glitched again, yeah. Well, we didn't do it. It's, it's on the... I mean, I'm interested to find out, um, Lee, and maybe we can find out as to... Where he was at the time? Was he on the sidewalk? Did somebody... Yeah, know, but I, it, it doesn't sound like he remembers. Well, I know, but, um, you know, I'm sure since then they've talked about it and he was with some friends, so maybe there were some some witnesses there. I'm not yeah. I'm not entirely sure. Have we got a connection uh, close to being back? Uh, no, we don't. They still seem to be kind of okay. held up for whatever reason. Okay, we've had numerous stories, and I can't, I can't relate which ones they are. Um, my memory's not that detailed, but I know that we have had numerous stories in which people that are involved directly with an incident um, have not been given full disclosure of details about where their loved one is or what's going on or what they're doing. Or, and, and I often wonder, Kevin, why that is is it is it suspicion um or lack of decision making on part of the people that are uh that are dealing with the family a kid's hit by a car well a kid okay he's a man 19 years old doesn't uh, whatever well as you say he's somebody's kid right he's somebody's kid yeah um uh hit, hit and run and and the mom doesn't know where he's going is that some sort of policy i don't understand that now, I don't understand how there could be confusion. 
I can understand how there could be confusion, legitimate confusion, is do we bring him to St. Catharines and then to St. Catharines? Yeah, well, decision? how does he get to Hamilton? How does he get to Hamilton? I can understand that, but not being able to deliver that in a straight because I mean, Welland Avenue, Welland Avenue near Geneva Street is not that far from the St. Catharines Hospital for emergency no needs in particular. But gosh, I'm interested to know, like, when he when he was hit, was he in the middle of the road? Where who went out there to kind of divert traffic? Was it on Was it on the sidewalk? Did his Did his friends we just don't tend have, to we him? We just don't. We just don't have anything. We yeah, have no, who we called? Have nobody. Who made the call to a, to EMS? And it's pretty obvious that Deacon is not. Uh, I mean, he's not 100% in possession of his uh, faculties because yeah. of the medication. And just, you know, I am, I am uh, trading some texts here with them and trying to get them to, to come back on the program. So, okay, uh, you know, internet willing. And I think it's, a, it's more of an issue at their end. I'm checking things out at our end. Everything okay. seems to be okay. Um, well, anyway. That just happens. Anybody that's ever been on a, on a Zoom call or a Skype or a FaceTime yeah, yeah, or whatever, yeah. I mean, that stuff just happens all the time. Because I know we've got... We've got all the uh, T's crossed and I's dotted on our end. So, um, but there are a lot of questions about, about this and uh, maybe law enforcement has those questions too. I don't know. Uh, nevertheless, a 19 year old man was left in the middle of a main thoroughfare in downtown St. Catharines after being hit by a vehicle and questions swirl. This is another thing that happened while we were away and Kevin thank you for posting that and reminding me. Um, our, our key sponsor, our, the, the company that mainly fuels this program as they do Niagara of course is Gales Gas Bars. And while we were away there was a disturbing video hit uh, social media about customers at uh, one of the uh, one of the convenience stores operated by Gales Gas Bars, and um, a very disturbing video of these people throwing some of their some of the the store's own merchandise at the clerk behind the counter uh, in in some sort of homophobic um, slur comment or or action. And last week, it was last week, wasn't it, that we interviewed um, the HR manager at Gales Gas? Last week? Um, and, and I wanted to mention it because it was, it was so, so disturbing. Uh, and I was really thankful that Kim Shannon from Gales Gas, the HR manager there, came on to talk about it, especially in light of the fact that June is pride month here in the country and, and it's a very very timely thing to be to be talking about right now gales became a rainbow registered company a number of weeks ago and we talked about uh, we talked with kim at that time about that and how important it was that they believed that their company should be inclusive of all uh, creeds and colors and delineations and persuasions uh, and uh, again the LGBT plus community and uh, that that designation comes from the LGBT, LGBT plus Chamber of Commerce of Ontario uh, I don't know of other companies yet in Niagara that have been so designated but we're very proud that our key sponsor in Gales Gas uh, is so designated and uh, again, I, I thought it was an important message that uh, Kim Shannon, their HR manager, had for us on last week's show when Bree Watson was uh, so capably filling in. And uh, so thank you, Kim, for coming on. Thank you, Gales, for continuing to uh, talk the talk and walk the walk of, of, this, of this topic. And we're proud to have you as sponsors. I believe we have uh, Deacon Bentley and Maureen Butcher, his mom, back. Hi, guys. Uh, Hello again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, gl glad to have you back in the, in the connection zone here. Maureen, I was asking you when we left why you believed that the emergency people did not tell you where Deacon was going. Honestly, I, I don't know. I was, I was very mad. <laughs> Were you on the scene at the time? I was not. Where were you? 
I was in Welland. I was on my way back to St. Catharines. Okay. Uh, but you knew that they, who was on the scene that was communicating with you? Uh, his girlfriend. Okay. So she said the, it, this was the EMS people? Yeah, when she was here. So when we came back to St. Catharines, we called the EMS to ask which hospital he was in yeah. um, because they didn't take him to St. Catharines. They took him to Hamilton. Yeah. And he refused to give us any information, just kept saying that I can't give that information. We have no, it's not our right to tell you. I asked how many hospitals were in Hamilton. He told me several. And that was the end of that conversation. Were they sure that you were who you said you were? Maybe they thought they were talking to somebody, like they couldn't prove your identity or something. Was that it? Prove mine, but she, I know the girlfriend talked to EMS, so the girlfriend was there. So that's how we got the number to get a hold of the um, detective to find out which hospital. Okay. So, uh, Deacon, your girlfriend was, was there. She, she was with you when you were hit? Uh, I believe she was like right behind me. Okay. What did she say to you happened? Uh, basically that I was crossing out into the road and the car just came and hit me. Okay. So you went out into the, you, you were out into the road by a bit and the car hit you. Okay. Uh, yeah. and then, and then, and then the car took off. Yeah. And, and was it, a was it one of I mentioned the fact that they were considering a like a burgundy Toyota that that was it was she able to confirm the color or make of the car? I'm not too sure. We won't know until we talk to the detective more. Okay. So so you haven't had that debrief yet with uh no. with the cops. All right. Man, I had a dog that looked exactly like what's the dog's name? Diablo. Diablo. Diablo? <laughs> Our, our dog's name was Brutus. He looked, he was exactly the same kind of dog. <laughs> How old is he? Uh, five. Yeah, he's five he's a, now. Oh, he's a beauty. Okay, sorry uh, for going sideways. It just kind of got me. Uh, okay, so Maureen, what happens, what happens next? Have you been, uh, and Deacon, I'll send this question to you too thoroughly questioned by investigators no no do you expect to be uh, probably not it's more of a gotta harass them you've got to ask them okay um is there a particular investigator that you know that is in charge of this case uh his girlfriend has that information yeah, yeah. okay but you guys don't I don't. No. Okay. Uh, let me let me pop on here. Sorry, it's it's Kevin behind the scenes. I know you guys can't see me, but just wondering, uh, Deacon, how many friends were you with? I know your girlfriend was there, and doesn't seem like like they have a, a good understanding or have shared with you exactly what what yeah what happened after you got hit. You're probably I mean knocked unconscious. Was was that what they're saying, or were you able to make it back at least? onto the sidewalk no, like, or can you take us through the series of when, events like there is nothing that's all i could say it was like falling asleep in a sense okay it's just like quick uh, for you that's yeah, how that's yeah. how you felt but to go to kevin's point have you you must have talked since now i know friday to now and you were three days in uh in icu so you haven't had a lot of time do you expect to be able to get a little bit more clarity from your friends or, or whatever as time as time goes by as to like hey tell me what the hell happened to me uh are you gonna oh, get it yeah like I, I talked to like a few of the neighbors and stuff like they're saying like oh man i'm glad you're okay blah blah, blah. Like, you're, they were saying that, because I asked them what happened, and they said that my girlfriend was right behind me, and I was crossing the road. And then she's, like, started screaming, oh, my God, you got hit by a car. And basically, that's when I got hit by a car. Yeah, and okay. everything is all, like, black out. Yeah. And then from there, I guess, whoever called the uh, EMS, and then... And then from there, uh, went from there. everything yeah. took over. All right. 
Uh, had you been partying a bit before this, or what? What was your plan for the day, or is that memory all gone too? Honestly, I don't even remember what I was doing before. Wow. Okay. Like, well, that's not unusual, I suppose. Okay. Um, so uh, now let me ask you this: about uh, either one of you can answer. As far as the medical prognosis is concerned, is Deacon going to fully recover from this? Is there any lasting damage, or like, how's that going? Um, we won't know. We got to let his body heal first. Yeah, I got right, it. Like, so there's like no memory of being hit by the car when he was trying to. We were slowly trying to bring him to in hospital. He didn't remember nothing. He didn't know why he was there, what was going on. Okay. It took like a lot of the nursing staff, us trying to remind him like you were just hit by a car. You didn't do anything wrong. And just after being released, I could barely walk. Like I would fall over and stuff. At what, like, at, at wow. what part of your body were you hit? Side, front, back, what? I think it was my side. Okay. So you were hit like about... I guess, I guess it would have been about your your hip height then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Maureen, are you going to stay on? Uh, I guess we've learned uh, o over the time that you got to stay on top of this because they're not coming to you. Um, are Are you going to keep on top of this investigation yourself? Oh, I am. Okay. <laughs> no doubt about that. Okay. I am. Good. I'm, good. I'm all over this. This is I've. Yeah, I'm the one that like. You know, I keep telling his girlfriend, you need to call this detective. We need to get this information there. So if you don't start doing it, I'm going to start calling because okay. I don't know which officer I need yeah, to because, talk I mean, to, she would, I yeah, she, find it. Yeah, um, because th there should somehow be a point of contact between you and, uh, and the investigation. So at least uh, you can be kept up to date on that. Uh, oh. um, will you guys... Um, uh, Maureen and Deacon, will you um, stay in touch with us and, and, and keep us posted so we can sort of uh, build a thread uh, as this investigation goes on and stay up to date with this? Because these, th these are the okay. kind of things that these are the kinds of things that Niagarans want to feel that uh, were they in the situation that you are, uh, that, th that their interests uh, would be looked after and they'd be kept informed because information really is the key. What people, they don't mind going through something, but most people just hate not knowing what the hell's going on. Yeah, and, that's, that's and, where we're at right now. I don't like not knowing Okay, well, nothing. as soon as you I, find- Except for the messages and stuff that are coming through from people giving information to me. All right, well, as you get information and as you know more, keep in touch with us, okay? All right. All right. Have a good day. Thank you, Deacon. Uh, all the best, and uh, I know I, now. I know what you're doing down with your head down there. You're messing around with the dog. <laughs> uh, so listen, get well, feel better. Uh, Maureen, keep us keep in touch, and um, thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Absolutely, thank you. Cheers. Uh, tangled webs we weave, Kevin. Why is it, why is it, uh, rhetorical I know, this question, that it is so hard for close family members of people involved in incidents, or if you want to call them victims or potential victims, why is it so hard to get information? Why does a guy hit on Welland Avenue when St. Catharines go to Hamilton? If he does go to Hamilton, there has to be a reason. Maybe they're too busy. We saw stories over the past week, and I know the EMS people, if there's somebody from EMS right now watching this thing, they're getting, we have unconscionable wait times at hospitals. I don't know if you've seen the headlines over the last week or so, but I have. And one of the big stories is the fact that these EMS people have to wait for so long to download or upload their patients, their charges into the hospital, that the weights are absolutely uh, um, astronomically horrible. So, would it, maybe, maybe they ended up taking Deacon to the Hamilton Hospital because it would have taken them longer to get him looked at in St. Catharines than it would to drive to Hamilton. If that's the case, that sucks. 
if it takes if it takes longer to get looked at uh, and uh, downloaded from an ambulance to the St. Catharines General Hospital than it does to drive to Hamilton on a Friday night, there's something desperately wrong. I'm not saying that's what happened, but considering the other headlines we've seen this week about the fact that the EMS people have to wait so long to download a patient, I know that sounds like a, a computer bit, but I mean, that's really what it is. You're downloading a patient. What's next? We have to drive to uh, Mississauga? Oakville? What's next? So, but they won't tell the mom. Yeah, I feel This bad. is the I mean, kid's mother. They have lots of questions and not many answers. But nobody seems to want to ask the tough questions that, that, that demands an answer. What the hell's going on? Uh, Lee, we got uh, Kevin Newfeld coming up there. Uh, they're celebrating 25 years. They being Beau Chapeau Hat Shop. Yes. Right on the main street there in Niagara-on-the-Lake. And it includes an expansion and all that. So we'll go inside the store in a couple of minutes. But um, crazy driving incidents. There was another one in Fort Erie earlier this week that um, just scratched the surface of oh, being bizarre. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. SUV collides with a house. <laughs> Uh, it sounds it it sounds crazy, but uh, this happens more times than you would believe. Last Saturday, approximately uh, quarter to one in the morning, emergency services personnel responded to a report of an SUV into a house in Fort Erie. Okay, that in and of itself, remarkable, but not overly remarkable. However, the story gets a little bit more complex. The officer has arrived on scene, found a man who had been in the home at the time of the collision being treated by emergency medical services paramedics. Okay, so he was in the home and the SUV hit the house. Now he's outside. EMS is looking after him. His injuries were believed to be minor. A woman who also had been in the home at the time uninjured. So it's a 2017 uh, Yukon. Big, big four by four vehicle. Struck the corner of the house on Ridgeway Road between Erie and Graber Avenue. The Yukon caused significant damage and the home was deemed no longer safe for occupancy. I for okay, so this is quite an impact. The owner of the Yukon, who happened to be on the scene, I would think so, reports that the SUV was stolen. He the owner of the Yukon wasn't driving the Yukon. Okay, but he was on the scene and said it was stolen from a bar on Erie Road where they'd been before. Witnesses reported seeing a male run from the scene who was wearing a black hooded sweatshirt. The driver was not located. Wow. Can you imagine being a cop trying to figure this stuff out? So, okay, so you had a couple of people in a house. A big honking SUV smashes into your house, hard enough that it injures one of the occupants. Okay, got that. Now that occupant is outside, not inside, outside. Being, see, that used to be his bedroom, apparently. There's the vehicle and there's whatever's left of the room. So now we got this guy outside, uh, his, his partner, the person with him, the woman uninjured. So he's being treated outside. Now, on scene at the time was the owner of the vehicle that went through the wall. But that's not the guy that was driving. It was somebody else that was go, driving. There's the uh, injury sustained by the guy inside the house. And this picture here, Lee, shows where his bed was in relation. And there's the Yukon at yeah. the front of the house. Yeah. And that's where this guy was sleeping. And somehow... That's what the house used to look like. And that's what it looks like now. Yeah. And somehow we are led to believe that there were one or both or all of these folks having a beverage previous to this happening. Hmm. It is a little strange. This is going to be on a dateline sometime. I, you know, yeah, you know, so no. hold on a second. If okay, a car right. smashes into a house. Yes. The driver... Sorry, not the driver. The owner of the car... Is on site. Happens to be there. Or at least shows up minutes later. Says it was stolen from the bar down the road. Where he was. But somebody stole it, and that's how it crashed into the house. I just happened to be here. 
but it wasn't me driving. And we just saw somebody run away. But, but if it was down the street, he was probably chasing... I don't know. Or... I don't want to CNN it. I mean, I don't. I don't want to get get into conjecture and no, but I mean, that's, what ifs. But that's still. that's the connection that I think a lot of people are drawing. Is like, Answer oh no, 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 I wasn't driving. It was stolen, and the driver went that way. They fled. Did we ever find the driver? No, we never yeah. found them. Was there really a driver? That's what I'm wondering. Was the car really stolen? Uh, here we go. I was looking for this stuff. <laughs> here we go. So you can see the impact. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to malign anybody's character or get into uh, get into dangerous legal waters here, but this is a strange story. Okay, that's a strange one. No shortage of entertainment. No. Yeah. All right, Leo. Just to remind everybody, the show is always wide open. You can join via Zoom, and the Zoom link is wanna, right there in the chat. Yeah, and I, I do want to thank Gales again, and I do. Uh, want to thank Carlo and uh, and his people at Performance Heating and Air for also continuing to support this program while we're here, while we're away, whatever, uh, as well as Verge Insurance Group, uh, another supporter of this show and uh, has been unwavering in their support of uh, Niagara 411 Live. If you kind of tuned in and, and missed the beginning, and you're and you're wondering why I sound just a little bit like Kermit the Frog, um, or not far off, is the fact that uh, I'm just kind of after my after my trip. I'm uh, get, there's a lot of bugs in those Creek Islands, you know. Uh, when you're when when you're when you're back dealing with all the rich and famous people, you never know what you're going to find. And um, it's not COVID, by the way. Because I did all the tests and all the rest of it, it's just some sort of laryngitical thing, and uh, um, that so that's that's why there's a bit of an extra tonality in the in the, in the vocal cords <laughs> today. And believe me, I'm looking forward to getting getting rid of them. I have an author halfway around the world that's waiting for me to finish a book narration that she wrote, and uh, this is not the voice she wants narrating the book. <laughs> So, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, Lee, let's uh, hear a different voice as a setup and a segue into uh, our next guest, that being Kevin Newfeld, the yes. owner of Beau Chapeau. A little of course. video he's got up here. Without a doubt, the most common question I get asked is, so how did you ever get into opening a hat store? Oftentimes, it's assumed we either bought it or it's a franchise. But in actuality, it was started by my wife, Jana, and myself. With little experience, little access to working capital, and a whole lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and family support, we are now privileged to be celebrating Beau Chapeau's 25th anniversary. As a token of our gratitude, on the fourth Saturday of each month until the end of this year, we'll be doing a draw for a prize valued at over $250. So come in for a visit, check out our new expansion, and enter to win a great prize. Thanks again for the part you've played in Beau Chapeau's 25 years of hattery. Okay, awesome. And uh, to Kevin Newfeld, thank you and Beau Chapeau for the, the role you've played in this program. We have our <laughs> dueling straws out today, I That's see. That's true, we do, yeah. Two yeah. good-looking guys and good-looking hats. What's, uh, what's, what's well, what's at least one good-looking guy, anyway. <laughs> uh, so, Kevin, um, actually, considering the fact that uh, over this long May weekend. Uh, most Canadians think of this as the unofficial start to summer. I went to my very special Beau Chapeau hat box on the top shelf of my closet and I did right. pull out the straw hat. So this is the this is the first appearance of my summer straw for the season. That's excellent. You observed straw hat day. Way to go. Yeah, awesome. So, uh, <laughs> and, and again, I thank you for uh, supporting. I, I bought uh, two or three Beau Chapeau hats long before I ever knew who owned the place. So, right, yes, uh, thank and, you. And, and, and since you kind of chimed in to say, hey, let's uh, contribute to some hats, I think it's been great, and I thank you for that. But uh, yeah. so moving on, moving on to, to the to biggest thing, 25 years in business, yeah. in a specialty business like hats, is something to be extremely proud of. Yeah, we are very proud of it. Um, also very humbled because we could not have done it alone. You've probably heard the saying, if you want to go fast go alone but if you want to go far go together right and we that's very much how we feel so many people have helped us get here and we're really grateful for that 
how did you said your wife started it or it was her idea or whatever in that video that we watched uh walk us back to the to the okay. beginning 25 years ago how this all started so back in 1996 uh, my wife and i were living in whistler actually and uh, we got pregnant with our first child and so before making a trip back to, Can to ontario we thought let's just go to washington for the weekend um, or it's to um, Seattle. So we went to Seattle and while we were there, we visited a costume shop and I had a great time in this costume shop. You know, I'd put on a top hat and I was Abe Lincoln, you know, four score and seven years ago. And yeah. then I'd put on a, an Australian Outback and I was Paul Hogan. That's not a knife. This is a knife, you know, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, I didn't really think anything of it. I left and I thought, you know, as we left, I thought, where, that's interesting. Where can you go and have fun? And even if you don't buy anything, and didn't really think anything else of it afterwards. We got back to Niagara and um, I heard that there was a vacant space available. And I actually really originally wanted to do sports memorabilia, signed jerseys, hockey cards, that sort of thing. But it never made it off the ground. My, Thank I God. Couldn't yeah, I <laughs> couldn't, <convince my, laughs> couldn't convince my wife. Uh, so we started thinking about what else was, you know, what else was coming back. And at that time, I don't know if you remember back in like 97, the PT Cruiser was a brand new car. Yes. Um, and, you know, low rise, wide bottom jeans were all the fashion. And um, Cigar Aficionado was the most popular magazine. And we started thinking, what else, what else along that vein um, could work? And so we started talking about hats and we searched for other hat stores. There were actually only two that I found. Both were quite dated. Um, but we thought, what if we could blend, you know, a modern retail environment with great service and, you know, a real full immersive experience? Um, and Beau was born. And my wife actually picked the name, um, but I had no, I had no access to credit. I was 25 years old. I, um, I ended up getting a $19,000 credit line and seven credit cards. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I grew up on a farm, right? So I, I wasn't, I'm, I'm not highly into fashion, but I found myself uh, downtown Manhattan on New York Fashion Week, me and this little country bumpkin looking for looking for fashion hats. And um, I revolved credit like a circus performer. <laughs> and <laughs> and Beau Chapeau was born. It was, uh, yeah. I mean, and, and all of the stars seemed to have aligned here, Kevin, because uh, not only is it is it a unique product that I guess was, as you mentioned, right for its time? Mm -hmm. um, you couldn't have picked or ha been able to pick uh, a better location in a in a boutique uh, town like Niagara on the Lake. Yes, yeah, and I the mean, Shaw and everything it, plays into that really, yeah, really well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. 25 years later, and I've been waiting to have this conversation with you because I've been into your store about, oh, I don't know, over the last few months, four or five times. Um, yes. And the hardest thing to do is not, is not to decide what hat you're going to buy. It's to decide what hat you're not going to buy. Right. That is the hardest thing to do. Yes, the paradox of choice, right? Indeed. Uh, yeah. From like about ten thousand that you have in stock. Anyway, you've been you've been working on a new expansion to the shop. Tell mm -hmm. us about this. So this has been a dream of mine for years. Um, we, previous to COVID, um, we only bought and sold hats as as most retail spaces. Yeah. Um, but because of COVID, we had the opportunity to expand um, to our neighbor's space, which would have doubled our size, and so. We, you know, together with the staff, we had a meeting and we're like, what do you guys think? Should we, should we go for it? And we thought we can either bunt and be safe and, you know, hunker down during these uncertain financial times, or yeah. we can, you know, lean in and swing for the fence. And uh, so together we decided we would. And um, we, we then had to decide what to fill it with. So that was another question, but I've always wanted to have a full service vintage hat makers workshop. I hear you. And it just so happened that the Hatter on Avenue Road in Toronto, um, the Catlaw brothers were retiring in 2020, just right around the time of COVID. And uh, I worked out a deal with them and uh, wanted to carry on their family legacy because they started the hat service in 1936. George Catlaw Sr. started it. Wow. Yeah, 1936. Everybody and wore hats in 1936. Everybody. So what he would do is um, he had a truck and he would crisscross Toronto going to, to hotels, to dry cleaners, 
picking up hats, bringing them back to his workshop and blocking, steaming, cleaning, making alterations, that sort of thing. They would do five to 600 hats a daily. Wow. That's, in that's 36. unheard of now. In 1936, yeah. Wow. And when he came back from the war, the, the, the Second World War, he, he opened up um, the Hatter. Um, well, the Hatter was opened in 1972, but he opened up another store and then they changed the name. But um, his sons, um, George and Steve and Len, all yeah. worked in the shop since they were little kids. And uh, so what we did is we purchased all of their equipment. A lot of the equipment they weren't using anymore. They were winding it down. And uh, some of it was in the basement. They had, you know, sewing machines from 1893. <laughs> they had, um, you know, hatter's tables that I have not, I've only seen one of these hatter's tables. They were made by the Hoffman um, Manufacturing Company in Toronto. And we have two of these hatter's tables that have uh, steam pots and, and brim steamers, crown steamers. So wow. we've got a full vintage workshop. That's, that is, that is so fascinating. Now, um, I have, in the past, had had hats that were damaged for one reason or another, and right. there was never any place to get them. Uh, they used to call it blocking, right? That, That's get right. Them, get them blocked. Yep. Um, and and one time I had a Stetson, a, a, a really nice felt Stetson, mm -hmm. directly out of Calgary, because uh, yep. I've always been into hats, and and it got mauled by my dog. <laughs> my dog completely yep. just like wrecked this hat. Yeah, and I yeah. was devastated. And I found one place in Niagara at the time, and I can't even remember what it is now, but they had to block the crown in a different shape because they didn't have the original shape. That's right. So, yeah. so, I had to, so can, you do, can you do various shapes and styles of crowns and brims and stuff like that? Exactly. So over my shoulder here, you see um, those are all uh, fedora crown blocks. So the hat you're wearing, the hat I'm wearing, you'll see it has, um, it has you know, a, a definite shape. Yeah. And we would block that and then um, press it with a sandbag press, um, apply steam. And then the brim are the long pieces above, all the, the donuts up there. Right. Those are all hand carved wooden uh, blocks. And those wow. are the flanges for the brim. So we've got over 350 different blocks here. Um, and it's, it's incredible what you can what we can do now. We've never been able to do anything like this. There's no other store in the country that does this. Um, there's a couple in the states, but it's a it's a lost art, right? And so we've had you know uh, George Jr. and his his brother Len have come and given us training and that sort of thing. So it's been pretty great. Oh, so you've been you've been able to connect with the people that actually had used this equipment in the past. Absolutely. I wanted to carry on their legacy, right? And I wanted to because it's important. We, you can't let it you can't let it die. Well, so, congratulations um, on your 25 years. Um, um, I, of course, as you know, have a special uh, place in my heart for uh, uh, for chapeaus. Uh, <laughs> but but to be able to have that skill, that art, that that art form, and it really mm -hmm. is an art form uh, beyond the technology yes. um, here in in Niagara, uh, right right in the heart of downtown Niagara on the lake on Queen Street, and. Uh, Man, it's just, uh, you're heading into the season now that, um, that is, you're going to be overwhelmed. Um, one thing I, I do want to add, Kevin, yeah. I don't want to dominate the conversation, no, no except problem. for the fact I want to compliment you on your staff. Oh, they're excellent, aren't they? Um, they're very knowledgeable, they're yeah. very helpful, and they're very patient. Um, yes. Which, yeah. is, which is necessary for this, because... I mean, trying on hats and buying a hat is like trying on sunglasses or mm -hmm. like any mm -hmm. accessory. People are very fussy about how it looks on them. And now when you've got, when you've got a, a, a stock of like 10,000 hats, yeah. um, and I'm not exaggerating, that's about what you have on hand, right? We always have 10,000 minimum. Yeah. So, so yeah. it takes people time to make up their minds. This one, yes. that one, this one, whatever. Uh, and, and your staff is just always awesome at, uh, at taking their time oh, and, and making suggestions. Hear. They're great. Yeah, yeah. They, t they do a lot of training. And it's kind of overwhelming when they first start because it, it is a lost art. And everybody's face shape and structure yeah. is suited for a specific kind. And that's, that's quite... You know, it's quite difficult to, to get the hang of. And uh, so, yeah, they're very good at, you know, just letting you try on what you need to try on and make your choice. And we won't let you leave with a hat that doesn't look good on you. 
Yeah. Right? We, and we I mean, want you it, to get compliments and come back and buy more. If you so. want to, if you want to look exactly <laughs> like Indiana Jones, you got the hat. That's uh, right. I yeah. mean, all that stuff. Is, so, what do you think of this one? Does it suit me? I like it. Yeah. You well, you're you're pretty tall, right? And, yeah, pretty uh, tall. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So a nice, a nice little bit of a wider brim. And, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. I like it. Looks good. I have, I have one, two, three, four, five. I think I have six of your hats at home. Okay. I hardly ever got, go. Hmm. I was just wondering, do you have any that you need restored? Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, because I treat them well. Uh, I want, want to mention your monthly draw, too. I, I, I yes. lost the graphic there because I was looking at you. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, so every month on the fourth Saturday of each month um, for the rest of the year, we're going to get we're going to do a draw uh, for a two hundred and fifty dollar or more prize. So we've got some swag from a number of our suppliers. There'll be gift cards. There will be other things. We're giving away a two night stay um, at the River Merchant Inn in Stratford. We're nice. doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So every month we're going to give away $250 or more. And all you have to do is stop by the store. Don't have to buy anything. Just come and play. Come and play. All right. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things I wanted to mention too is the fact that um, I visit hat shops all over the world. When I travel, if, if there's a hat shop, I go in. Yeah. Um, yeah. And of course, one of the most famous hats that people know is the Panama hat. And you can spend right. you can spend a lot of money on a hat. Um, and some people think you have to spend a lot of money if you go into Beau Chapeau. And I got to tell you, um, I've purchased well this hat in particular, for example. It's a beautiful, beautiful natural mm -hmm. straw hat. It was not uber expensive. It wasn't two yeah. three hundred dollars. I mean, it's just. I mean, a two hundred and fifty dollar gift certificate at Beau Chapeau will probably buy you two or three hats. It would. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. When, once you get into the higher the higher end, right, and say like a Panama, they, the the breadth of pricing on a Panama hat is huge. Is quite wide because yeah. if you go all the way up to a Monte Cristi, that hat took over a month to make and can only be woven by hand in the hours of darkness because, <laughs> uh, like, literally, because oh, yeah. it, it's done in Ecuador and they they do it over a post. Um, and they go around and around and around in circles, and they can only do it at night when it's the most humidity. And um, so the thing yeah. is, some of the hats, uh, most of the hats that I purchased from you are virtually indestructible. I got like um, um, rain, not rain proof, but mm -hmm. water resistant. They're yep. foldable. Uh, they're, they're resilient as hell. And um, like th there's something for everybody there, even, the, yeah. even to the winter toques, knit caps, all kinds yep. of stuff. Yeah, yeah, we do guarantee quite a few hats for life, actually. So yeah. if you can manage to wear it out, we'll bring it back to us and we'll pat you on the back and give you a new one. I'll take you up on that. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Newfeld, Beau Chapeau, Niagara on the Lake Queen Street. Yeah. Uh, I've been really looking forward to talking to you. Congratulations on the 25 you. years. Yeah. Uh, congratulations on the new, uh, um, the new division, the new section yeah, service sure. uh, of the shop. Custom shop. Yeah. I want to come in just to look at it. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's fascinating. It really is. Okay, uh, and I encourage everybody to come see you. And uh, give, my, give my love to your staff because they are great. I will make sure I tell them. Thank okay. you so much. Thanks, Kevin. Have a great day. Awesome. Bye. You too. I love that place. It's, just, it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, a, it's like an ice cream store for some people. Uh, it's like a, a little bit of modern nostalgia, if I could throw an oxymoron yeah. in there. Yeah. Because everything they're doing there is modern. Yep. And yet it harkens back to a, a different day. An age and era that is long. And, and, and I, don't, I don't just wear this stuff for the show. I think you will attest. I, 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 I wear my style hats every day. When I go out anywhere for any occasion, yeah, you do. Um, yeah. You do. Uh, I want to remind people that uh, you know we are live here at Fiddler's Poor House, and it's a beautiful day. And here we have some people right here looking and saying, "Yeah, let's sit right here." Yay! We find the we found the golden seat. Yeah, let's sit right here in the window. But as you see, there's some beautiful window streets overlooking, or, or window seats rather, overlooking the street on St. Paul, and you can come down to Fiddler's, say hi to Mel, and uh, and have something to eat. It's uh, fantastic. We had. Uh, couple of shots we were there speaking of Melanie there she is right there um, we had a trans uh, uh, I guess it was a it was dubbed first of all as a transport fire or a possible transport fire then it was confirmed as a transport 
fire. And um, I suppose in and of itself, it's again, not terribly remarkable, things happen. I am just uh, constantly impressed by the number of vehicle fires that get reported. There it is there. I mean, why? We all, we all see these reports, Kevin, about a, a vehicle fire that um, emergency crews were attending, etc. We never hear how they started. That's what I want to see. I want to see. I want to see an article or a posting, uh, maybe even a Facebook page. Here's how it started. Yeah, I mean, you and I have both driven a lot. I don't think I've been on the the brink of a fire. No. So I'm not. how do they how do they get going? I don't know. I, I really don't. I, I really don't understand. Um, speaking of highways, one of the things that also was announced while I was away that I took note of, you can never stop working when you're in this business. It's really hard uh, to ignore the news and ignore the information. That you, you become an information junkie. And one of the things that caught my attention, and I'll tell you why, uh, was when the Ontario Provincial Police made its announcement of the fact, and this was a few weeks ago, so there have probably been more since then. So um, up until that particular date, there had been 112 deaths on OPP um, serviced highways in the province of Ontario, 112. What was said at the time was the main reason, the main cause of those deaths was speed. While at the same time, we heard that there were sections of 400 series highways in Ontario whose speed limit had been permanently set and increased to 110 kilometers an hour. These two pieces of information don't seem to go together uh, to me. Where's the uh, kumbaya moment with, with, with that scenario? When the, when the speed limit is set at 100 kilometers an hour, how fast are people going? 115, 120 when you're in the main corridors between St. Catharines and Toronto, you know it, 120, that's what people are driving. Because they figure out oh, if I get pulled, if I get pulled over at uh, less than 20K uh, over the speed limit, yeah, I'll pay a fine, but chances are I won't get pulled over because the cops are looking for people that are going faster or are stunt driving or something. So chances are you're traveling 120. Now, uh, the speed limit is set at 110. What are people driving, 130, 135? What's the number one cause of deaths on Ontario highways? Speed. Hold on, Lee. You're beginning to make too much sense. I think that. I'm sorry. On too tight. I'm sorry. Is this a logical moment? No, hats on too tight, pal. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, this week, uh, Lee, I think this was on Tuesday, which felt like a Monday because of the long weekend, but not a lot of hole or not a whole lot of traffic, but a lot of holes on Thorldstone. Oh, the sinkhole. Yeah. So there was a sinkhole. The sinkhole syndrome, ladies and gentlemen. And here we go. Thank you to yeah. the. In so there, there it go. is. If you look now, there's a shadow there that makes it look kind of funny. But if you look, uh, you see this great hunk of uh, asphalt pavement, um, well, sinking. And those just have a tendency to get bigger. It's like, it's like trying to, if you fall through the ice, trying to get out of the ice, the hole just gets bigger. It's the same kind of principle. The more the, the more you reduce the amount of support to your roadway, the more roadway you lose is pretty much how it goes. <laughs> and, uh, and Lee, I know we're getting to the end of the, uh, the show. And Are the we? End, and the end of your voice. Oh. Um, so we'll do one more. We'll stay in the city of Niagara Falls and just down on Lundy's Lane where this story sparked an interesting conversation in the comments. Thank you, Kevin, for bringing this up because this, this is the positive story of, uh, of the week. I work, uh, at, again, I apologize for the cords. Uh, I work at a drive through at McDonald's on Lundy's Lane, Niagara Falls. Just wanted to recognize the young woman who came through between 10 and 10.30, Monday, May 23rd. This is 10 and 10.30 in the, at night. She asked if we split tips, which I responded, we did. And she handed me a $100 bill to split between the staff that was working and how much she appreciated us. It really made my night to see everyone's face light up and I had goosebumps. Thank you so much for your generosity and kindness such an incredibly sweet gesture. Um, 
And people often wonder that when we're dining out, be it at a fast food place or even a, a more elegant restaurant, how does the staff um, distribute tip? Uh, how does it work if you put it on a card? How does it work if you pay cash? How does it work if you give your server? How does it work if you give the bartender? Like how, how does, how, and each establishment is different. Uh, and Lee, on this one, 270 comments. Yeah. And honestly, uh, all 270 of them were about whether or not you get tips when you work at McDonald's. <laughs> it, it, uh, everything from people that used to work there, that people have worked in similar uh, fast food places. And it came down to uh, it's location specific. And it seems that the owner is the one that stipulates. There's a really? lot of people saying like, hey, you know what? If I say, hey, keep the tip, they just throw it in that, in that jar for the Ronald McDonald house. Oh, uh, okay. Now, rolling up with a $100 tip that's a little different than keep the change. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, all, I'm all for charities like Ronald McDonald House. They do absolutely fabulous work. And other, other organizations that have ch similar charities that they run, uh, they run events for. That being said, the frontline employees at McDonald's and other, other frontline jobs like that, um, they may be making a little bit more than minimum wage right now, but not a whole lot more than, than minimum wage. And I know these, they're paying a little bit more now at some of these places because uh, good help is hard to find in these post-COVID days, and, and that happens. But if someone does, I mean, TIP stands for originally to ensure prompt or proper service. That's what it stands for. Now, if I'm, if I'm the person that cooked an absolutely amazing steak and went out of my way in the kitchen, somehow there should be a way for that tip to filter down to the cook. And I realize that they're not frontline people, and it's hard for the tips to, to, to filter down to the kitchens. And, you know, they these, usually do, though, in a lot uh, of restaurants. Well, in a lot of restaurants they do, some, some no, not so much. Um, but the frontline people, if you've got a server that is absolutely outstanding, goes beyond the beyond. And for, to, to get a tip in a fast food restaurant, you better go beyond the beyond. <laughs> right? Because no, nobody, let's face it, tips at Wendy's and McDonald's and Burger King's. Like, very few people, uh, if any. So if somebody gives you a tip and you're working at McDonald's, I say put it in your pocket. Because <laughs> you're the one they're giving the tip. Unless, like this woman, says, please take this and share it with your team. That's a whole different sack of hammers. I, I totally think that's, that's wonderful. But tipping again, it is, the, it is always the, the policy of management. Servers at restaurants, it's automatic that when you go to a restaurant, you tip the team or whoever. However they work it out, whatever. Um, a lot of wineries around the area wonder about that too. Do you tip the... Do you tip the people that are doing the porn? They're serving you something they're doing. If it's exemplary service, I think you do. But I also think that the person, you said, you were absolutely fabulous, and they walk out with a case of wine, they give you a tip, I think you keep it. The tip jar is, that's a, that's a lazy, that means anybody, anybody and anybody can do any sort of behavior and get a tip for it. I don't think that's right. If you did great, if you did a great job, and somebody says you were awesome, and hands you a ten dollar bill, you were awesome. You deserve that ten dollar bill, don't you think? I do. I always kept my tips. Yeah. <laughs> Never worked on the other side, Lee. Although no, I was a, I was oh, yeah. a, I was a caddy at a golf course when I was in high school. We yeah. used to rely on tips. I mean, we had our base rate, but really, that barely covered our work and then it was the tip and, and i've worked i've worked in two person or three person teams and in, in doing tastings and tours and stuff like that uh and been the lead and if they get if some like a group or whatever throws me 20 and then i share it with the i would share it with the team nice but if it's a one-on-one -on -one situation i'm sorry uh i happened to earn that uh, that guy over there didn't <laughs> well uh, so. lee I got to say, you did a tremendous job on the show today, and as it draws to a close, oh. I'm looking forward to the music video. Thank you. And uh, we'll we'll discuss your uh, remuneration and tip uh, when we're off the air here at Fiddlers. Yeah, right. Uh, with that being said, Windsor artist uh, Rachel Downing is uh, going to be on the program in just a few minutes to play us off the stage. And you're saying, Windsor? What's up with Windsor? Because... The video that she did for her song, Feel the Wave, was shot entirely in Niagara. So there's, there's your Niagara 
connection. We're going to get that in, in, get to that in just a minute. Gales Gas Bars Limited, thank you so much again for fueling this program as our title sponsor. Performance Heating and Air, Carlo, thank you. Uh, Verge Insurance Group, Mark Shirk uh, and Blake Shirk and your gang. We always appreciate your support. We are powered by WeStream. We didn't get a chance to blow your horn uh, this week, Kevin, but um, you've got a big, big night. Quickly, before we go to the music, we've got a big, big night tomorrow night with Momentum Choir. Yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be broadcasting live with Mendelt, showcasing Momentum Choir. If you're interested in what they do, stick around. Some amazing individuals comprise this choir from right here in Niagara. It is born in Niagara. Such a fantastic idea. And further to that, if you own a business or if you're an individual and you've been looking for a charity or a not-for-profit here in the region to support and get behind, I cannot think of a better one than Momentum Choir, but uh, I'll let you, I'll say judge for yourself. But tomorrow night we go live at 7 p.m. right here on Niagara 411 in full support of Momentum Choir, uh, their participants, and of course all of their families as well. And I know you're doing this on a volunteer basis because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a huge initiative that we stream supports, so kudos to you guys for doing that. Thank you. All right, uh, Rachel Downing from Windsor with the Niagara Shot uh, song and video, Feel the Wave. Thanks for being here, gang. It's lovely to be back with you. Cheers. Have you ever felt like you've had enough? Some nights have you ever felt like giving up? Do you ever want to give Troubles like yesterday. You gonna get up and get outside. Life is a beach, yeah, that's my vibe. Yeah, that's my 